Hi, my name is Peter Lambert. I work in product marketing in North America. I'm here with a couple of my colleagues to show you some of the highlights of the active table, some of the features, and maybe some ideas for demonstrating this table. And here is the activities menu. And as you can see, it is several layers deep, and it's also got a folder structure. So we've put similar activities in similar folders. I'm going to do uh, English language arts activity here. And as you can see, as we start the activity, it's asking us if we all want to do it. So my three students are going to click OK, and we're going to start the activity. And here the teacher has seeded the table with a series of words and a couple of phrases. The children can hear what each word says by just touching it. Once upon a time, there. Oh, well, let's go once upon a time, there. And I want to say was, but there's no was on here, so I'm going to bring on a keyboard, and I'm going to type that word. I'm just going to edit it so that the box isn't quite as big, and then I'm going to drag it off and add that word was. Was to the table. Once upon a time there was. So as you can see here with this activity, students could work together to create a short story, or they could work individually to create their own. Once the activity is complete, one student presses the X to exit, and of course it is driven by consensus, so students would have to agree to come out of the activity. So now we're going to show a collaborative activity. Three of us are going to work on this natural disasters facts worksheet. So here we have three sheets. I'm going to use the volcano sheet, and I can size and move it like this. I'm going to ask my students to bring on a keyboard each. So we each drag on a keyboard, and then we drag our notepad onto the keyboard to attach it. Now each student will type in a word or phrase about their particular topic. So I'm going to type in lava. And once we've done that, I'm going to now collaborate by pressing this collaborate button here. We all have to agree to collaborate, so let's go yes. And the notes are swapped between the students, so now we can offer our thoughts on a different topic. And of course, once we're completed, we could collaborate again. But let's assume now that we have completed this activity. So we need to detach our notes from the keyboard. And let's just orient them around so we can, we can present them neatly. And I'm going to now send this activity to the teacher. Once again, we have to agree, because it's all worked by consensus, that this is going to happen. What's happening now is that the flip chart is being built, and it's going to offer me to copy it to a USB key so it can be passed to the teacher. For now, I'm not going to do that because I want to show you the document that's created. Active Inspire launches, and the activity is imported in, in flip chart format. And here you can see a screenshot of the work as we completed it. Here you can see an individual notepad for volcanoes, tsunamis, and earthquakes. And here it gets quite interesting because we can see at this point the contributions that each of the students made. We can view this by individual. So each individual, we can see the tools that they used and the interactions that they made. And something quite interesting here is, it's like a heat map, but it's, it's actually an interaction map showing the interactions made by each student. Obviously, this is just a visual representation of the student um, interactions on the, on the table itself, but if you saw blank areas, you'd start to worry that the student wasn't doing any uh, contribution to that particular activity. 
So I'm going to exit Active Inspire now. And we're going to look at a math activity now. And we're going to do math dominoes. As you can see, there are word dominoes and there's a math dominoes for younger students, probably grade two, and for older students, probably grade four or five. We're going to do the very simple activity. We'll have to agree that we're going to start it. And we obviously have to manipulate our cards to make a line of dominoes. And, and let's go from start. Now, this is an activity where we have to collaborate and talk. So we're starting with three. What do you think the next one is? Plus six equals nine. Plus six equals nine. Minus four equals five. Pretty good. You're quicker than me. Plus two equals seven. Excellent. And um, where are we now? Minus, minus, minus six, six is four. one. That would work. So as you can see, we, we talk to each other, we collaborate, we complete the activity, um, and obviously there are different levels at which the students can, can work. We all have to agree to come out. Okay, let's look at how the web is implemented on the active table. Let's agree to go into this activity. In this particular activity, the, the table has been seeded with various topics. Here's a table trees exercise. Here you'll probably recognize Facebook. So I'm going to bring up a browser here and see how this operates. So the home page has been set by the teacher, um, but actually I want to go to Wikipedia. So all I do is I drag the Wikipedia icon onto the browser and it'll go direct there. If I want to do the table trees, let's drag that onto the browser and it'll go there. Now this is obviously live. These are going direct to websites. So the pictures have been seeded with URLs so the teacher can set up activities um, specifically that they want students to use the web for. Actually, the, the web browser is, is, is pretty useful too. If I want to capture an image, I simply drag it out from the web browser itself. And you'll notice the web browser is identified as the user by the user by the same avatar here. Okay, so let's exit this activity. One or two other things that we're able to do here, because this is a Windows 7 uh, processor underlying this, we can actually run applications that would normally run on the Windows 7 platform. So for instance, here's a jigsaw application. Here's an ideal um, activity for a wet recess, for instance. So you drag a, jig a jigsaw from the menu, choose from easy to hard, so it'll make up to 16 pieces. And students can collaborate to create that sort of jigsaw. So let's go for a really difficult jigsaw. This one is a video jigsaw. So can we see if we can build this? Well, it's still a video. What do you think? We need a corner. Oh, there's a corner. Let's come down here for the corner. And Laura's built that here. We're doing pretty good here. Here's another great activity. This is Microsoft Surface Globe. Very quickly want to show you this because it's just impressive. So let's, let's come over here and let's look down here at, oops, come here New York. And we're just zooming in here. Obviously we'll need an internet connection for this. The board has wireless internet, sorry, I mean the table has wireless internet and also an RJ45 if you only have uh, a wired connection. So here we are, here is, here's Manhattan. Let's zoom in here and we see the map starting to build. Now, let's look at this in 3D. That for me is so impressive. Imagine the virtual field trips you can take 
your children on using an application such as this. I'm just going to go into the settings to show you one or two features that you might want to, to play with if you're setting this up for a demo. Um, the first thing here is the, the background. You can change your background to any of the supplied backgrounds or you can insert a USB key and change the background maybe to a school or district logo. Um, any of these backgrounds can be added to uh, via USB. Also here's the security enablement. I can enable security um, or not, but for the sake of the demonstration, rather than having to pi use a pass key every time, you might want to disable it. Uh, set token size, set volume, in test, funky music, um, language and size of icons in toolboxes, default font and so on. I'm going to come out of that now and return to the main menu. So there you have it, some of the highlights of the Active Table. I think it's a great product. You know, for many years, we have been leaders in the interactive whiteboard space. We cover whole group class learning. Uh, with the expressions and the active votes, we looked at individualized learning and personalized learning. But now with the active table, we cover the small group collaborative learning space. So we offer a complete range of solutions uh, with our technologies. So it's designed primarily the activities that we ship with the table for age groups really between 4 and 11. So we're looking at elementary schools and middle schools as our primary market. Later on in the year, maybe early next year, we'll be releasing a software development kit which will enable our publisher partners to start producing activities that will be suitable for other age ranges. And we hope to see that develop into uh, an app store type application um, so the active table activities can be supplemented in that way.